Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So this video is going to be a little bit, uh, you know, controversial, uh, but I always wanted to cover this topic for a long time now. So yesterday I was browsing Flipkart and I found the MSI Alpha 15, which is a pretty good laptop. It has a good screen, good build quality, you know, good gaming performance through the Radeon RX 6600M graphics card. This laptop generally sells for one lakh, above one lakh rupees. So right now it's selling for like 93,000 rupees. So I figured maybe a lot of people will probably try to buy this one because it's got really good reviews as well, 4.5. And people are apparently very happy with it. I mean, it's fine if people are happy with it, but you've never seen me recommend this laptop. In fact, you've never seen me recommend high-end, you know, Radeon gaming laptops, the ones that have dedicated Radeon GPUs, the high-end ones. Now, there's a reason for it. So in this video, I'll cover why I don't recommend high-end Radeon gaming laptops. Okay. Now, don't click off this video. Don't don't like just dislike and, you know, drop a rude comment. Let's, let's try to understand why I don't recommend it. And uh, I'm not going to recommend, you know, people who are spending this much amount of money, uh, something which is not an all-rounder. As soon as, you know, the price range goes above like 80,000 rupees, the laptop has to be a overall well-rounded package. This laptop is a good all-rounder, good display, you know, good specifications and all that. Performance is good. But because of the Radeon GPU, the dedicated Radeon GPU, there are some inherent shortcomings of it compared to a corresponding competing NVIDIA GPU like the RTX 3060. Let's cover them. Okay. So before covering, let's take a look at what AMD is like what kind of position is amd right now uh both in terms of cpu and in terms of gpu so it's no hidden fact that amd has come such a long way like in terms of the cpu they are not even behind they are in fact leading the market especially in the server department they are just they have no competition in the consumer workspace AMD's Ryzen 5000, which came out in 2020, is still competing very well with Intel's Alder Lake. And AMD is coming out with Zen 4, uh, you know, in, I think in late 2022, uh, quarter 4. So, I mean, um, it's no hidden fact that AMD has surpassed Intel, even in, even in laptops. Like in laptops, I just always recommend, you know, these AMD Ryzen CPUs because of their good performance along with great efficiency, which is very important for laptops. So yeah, in terms of CPUs, guys, I mean, there is like uh, nothing hidden. Right now, AMD has come such a long way ever since, you know, 2017 when they revealed Ryzen. Uh, like, just forget about those AMD bulldozer days. Like, uh, that was nightmare for AMD. They were almost going bankrupt. And then, you know, since 2017, AMD has transformed the desktop market. I'm not going to lie. I mean, they have brought about a revolution. More core counts, high IPC, like... The world was stuck on quad cores. Remember that. Now, i7s of yesteryears are now i3s, basically. They have absolutely changed the market. They have changed the way Intel works, basically. So, kudos to AMD. They have done a great job with the CPUs. In terms of the GPUs as well, the Radeon team has come a long way. Like, just a couple of generations back, Radeon didn't even compete with NVIDIA at the high end. They were always in the, you know, the mid-range or the lower mid-range. They are always undercutting NVIDIA in terms of price and, you know, performing pretty good. And, you know, with Radeon RX 5000 series, they came out with the RX 5700 XT, which initially was on par with an RTX 2060 or 2060 Super. And then with Radeon's magic with their drivers, their drivers improved so much that at the end of the life cycle, the Radeon RX 5700 XT matched an RTX 2070 Super, which was much more expensive than an, than an RX 5700 XT. And then with RX 6000 series with RDNA 2, AMD has just caught up with NVIDIA in terms of gaming performance at the ultra high end, at the top of the, like, at the maximum, like at that absolute top end, NVIDIA, uh, Radeon is competing very well with NVIDIA. So in terms of gaming performance, again, Radeon has come such a long way, it's incredible. However, the one thing that uh, Radeon is still quite a bit behind is with productivity workloads. Yes, this is, one, this is what I wanted to cover. Now guys, I do want to, now guys, I do want to say, I am talking about only high-end AMD Radeon laptops, right? I'm not talking about the RX 5500M, and, you know, the RX 5600M, which come at really cheap prices, you know, they come at around 50,000, 55,000 to 60,000 rupees. And they do a really good job when compared to GTX 1650. 
GTX 1650 didn't receive the upgrades and encoders and all that from the GTX 1660 and above series, right? So GTX 1650 is using the old encoders from the GTX 10 series only. So in between the RX 5500M and the Art and the GTX 1650, there is not much difference in productivity performance. Okay. So someone purchasing a laptop like this, a laptop that is near one lakh rupees, I would assume a person would like to replace his or her desktop. So a laptop like this, he would probably use it for all types of purposes, not just gaming, but recording, streaming, let's say, uh, you know, video encoding, video editing, uh, 3D modeling, you know, in any types of AI, ML work, like let's say you're doing some machine learning, you're running big DL projects like that. I would assume you to run all sorts of applications on this, not just gaming, all right? And this is where Radeon is quite a bit behind NVIDIA. Uh, there was a time when, you know, Radeon was on top of, you know, their productivity game. But uh, right now, NVIDIA is just way ahead of uh, Radeon in terms of productivity performance, any kind of production workload. And now I appreciate Radeon's efforts, guys. They always come up with solutions which are open source that can be utilized by everybody. However, what this has led to is uh, since, like, let's say, let's talk about OpenCL, right? OpenCL, uh, Radeon uses OpenCL and even NVIDIA can use OpenCL. Right, Radeon has Radeon Pro Render in for Blender, but even Nvidia can use Radeon's Pro Render. So Radeon is coming up with its open source solutions. However, this is not really doing them much of a favor. Like it's not doing Radeon much of a favor. The reason is, uh, you know, it's been years since you know Radeon has been lagging behind Nvidia in the top end and you know in the desktop community in the desktop space, Radeon has been quite a bit behind Nvidia. There is no touching Nvidia right now, especially. But even then, if you go quite a years behind, uh, Radeon was nowhere near NVIDIA. They were not competing as well with NVIDIA. And as a result, the industry is shaped around NVIDIA. It's, it is shaped around NVIDIA's uh, proprietary technology, like the CUDA programming workflow. So CUDA has become industry standard. So most of the applications, productivity applications are very well, uh, you know, optimized for CUDA. The developers have really develop those applications keeping CUDA in mind. That's why, you know, an open sales implementation in those applications is not ideal, right? This, in my opinion, is a big drawback when it comes to these high-end laptops because when you buy such a high-end product, which is which you cannot upgrade, you cannot upgrade the GPU and put a different GPU, right? This is where, you know, the Radeon GPU sort of uh, confines you to what you can do. All right, enough talk. Let's take a look at some numbers. Uh, all right. And by the way, guys, before showing you all these, let me tell you, I'm not an expert in productivity. I use, I am a content creator. I use video editing softwares to edit videos and all that. I do streaming and all that, but I am not an expert in 3D modeling, in AI, ML. I'm not an expert in those things. However, there are reputed sites that have done benchmarks. So let's take a look at them. So let's take a look at the RX 6800 XT. So the RX 6800 XT is supposed to be a competitor to the RTX 3080, okay? So let's take a look at this performance in productivity workloads. All right. So let's start with DaVinci Resolve. So here you can see it's clear. The RX 6800 XT is quite a bit behind its competitor, which is the RTX 3080. It is significantly behind. And it is in fact behind the RTX 3070 as well, which is much cheaper than the RX 6800 XT. So yeah, uh, moving on to Adobe Premiere Pro. Here the RX 1600 XT does decently. It is better than the RX. It is... It is slightly better than the RTX 3070, but again, the RTX 3080 is significantly better than the RX 1600 XT. In After Effects, all the GPUs are quite together. Uh, there is not much discrepancy in performance. However, still the RTX 3080 is better. In Photoshop, there is no difference. That's fine. That's good. Now, then we go to Metashape. Now, I don't know about Metashape. What, what is this application about? However, you can see here the less time the better and you can see the rtx cards the 3070 and 3080 significantly better than the 1600 xt again let's move on to some more benchmarks so here we have got uh, indigo bench so here again you can see that the 3080 is significantly better than the 1600 xt and the 3070 is slightly behind the 1600 xt but again 3070 is much cheaper than the 1600 xt and then again we have got blender over here so here you can see they are using open sale for radeon and Optics probably they're using for the RTX card and you can see optics improves the performance so much. You can see the RTX 3080 uh, 
is like it's much faster it's almost like 42 percent 40 percent 42 percent better than the rx 16 that is a big difference guys that's a big big difference moving on to some more benchmarks here you can see uh blender 2.9 you can again see all the rtx gpus are significantly better than the 1600 xt over here you can see so this is the truth guys i mean the rx 6000 series has slightly improved over the rx 5000 series however you can see that the RTX GPUs has still no competition in 3D workloads. Over here, you can see DaVinci Resolve performance. Again, the RTX GPUs are better than the Radeon GPUs. So, yeah. Some more Blender benchmarks over here, guys. Uh, you can see the Cycles benchmark over here. You can see the 1600 XT taking 89 seconds to render. And you can see the RTX 3080 only 53 seconds to render the scene. And uh, yeah, they're probably using uh, optics for this as well. So I'm not sure they haven't mentioned it, but yeah. Same thing in EV, you can see here the RTX 30, here again the RTX 3080 is faster than the 1600 XT. In viewport, you can see the 62, uh, you can see the RX 1600 XT is doing 62 FPS, which is pretty good. But the 3080 is doing 97 FPS. Even the RTX 3070 is doing 97 FPS in viewport. So that's, that's big advantage for team green, right? The RTX cards are significantly better than the Radeon cards in these types of workloads. Then I would recommend you to check out this channel, uh, Tech Cage. This video is pretty good. So here what he has done is he has shown performance of, uh, you know, the different GPUs in, you know, Blender and all that, that all the RTX GPUs are significantly better than the Radeon GPUs. Even the RX, R, even the 30, even the 3060 Ti is beating the 6900 XT over here. So yeah, and you know, the 3080s are like so much better. It's almost 50% better can see over here in at least in windows there are some popular renderers like let's say octane render over here i don't know about the application guys once again i'm saying that doesn't even support radeon gpus okay not sure what is the case in 2022 but you can see at least according to this benchmark over here 2021 there is no support for radeon gpu in octane render and then you got v-ray again v-ray has no support for radeon gpus then you've got redshift also, no support for Radeon GPUs. Then you've got Arnold over here, Autodesk Arnold Renderer. Again, no support for Radeon GPUs. And lastly, we've got Keyshot, Luxion Keyshot. And you can see again, no support for Radeon GPUs, guys. So, the industry support for Radeon GPUs in compute applications is also lacking at the moment. And now let's move on to some, you know, value added features. As a streamer, someone like me who likes to stream, who likes to record videos, like record the you know the display and all that thing again nvidia has their nvidia encoder which again has no competition from radeon side radeon's encoder is also decent for you know screen recording but the problem is most streaming sites they use h264 for you know the streaming purpose and h264 along with a low bitrate recording which you will use because you know when you're streaming you don't want to like you do you want to like hijack the bandwidth of your you know the of your internet connection so you'll probably use low bitrate to stream so h264 plus low bitrate in this situation nvidia encoder is significantly better than the radeon encoders when it comes to image quality image stability and details all right so yeah now take a look at this because of the rtx you know the tensor cores and the rt cores of this of the rtx gpus nvidia has something called nvidia broadcast and take a look at some of the features let's start with rtx voice so so rtx voice is a ai powered background noise cancellation uh, feature that is present in nvidia broadcast and let's take a look at the demo that he is showing I asked my girlfriend to join me with a blow dryer here and that distracting sound makes it very hard to understand what i'm saying but when i turn on noise removal in nvidia broadcast you find that it's completely gone and that that, that blow dryer is still going thanks sorry <laughs> So you could see what an awesome feature this uh, like uh, RTX voice is. Uh, you know, right now I'm recording this video. It is really hot. I'm sweating actually. And there is work going around me. And like I'm living in a joint family. So there is like a lot of people are like, you know, they may sometimes talk. They may do some work. And this will like introduce noise in my videos. And then I have to do, redo it again. On top of this, my fan... I don't have AC, so I have the fan, but the fan is turned off because again, the fan will make noise. There's a slight humming noise, which will ruin the video. So you can see how good RTX voice works. It not only reduced the background noise, it almost killed it, but it did not 
it did not hamper the person's you know uh, natural voice it didn't compress it it was still quite natural so you can see such it is such a nice handy feature that that nvidia is able to provide you due to their you know the their tensor cores their rt cores which they are utilizing for you know ai and dl yeah so there's another feature where you can use the you can remove your background you can remove the uh, you know you can use a fake green you can get a fake green screen effect so you can remove the background you can you know blur the background so take a look at this your features as well let's take a look first up we have the ability to blur your background which you may notice that i need because i have a very cluttered and messy room but when i turn this background blur feature on all of a sudden i get this really classy effect and i can adjust the strength of that from low to high and everything in between or if i want so you can see how clean the background removal is because it's it's a quite a you know challenging background it has got a lot of different uh, patterns it is not it is it is really cluttered and it is not a simple pattern to remove or like you know a blur but you can see it is doing such a good job with the background you know blur and i can actually replace the background altogether you can see the cutout is so good the cutout is really high quality magic of ai <laughs> it's that easy or if i want to jump into some gameplay i can remove the background altogether and jump into some valorant you can see it is such a convenient feature right like uh, yeah i mean it's quite amazing man uh, this is the feature these are the some of the features you know that will take radeon years to catch up it will take them years to catch up because this nvidia has made such a nice uh, you know ecosystem of uh, you know features that it is difficult for radeon to compete in this situation another important feature that i would like to show you is the nvidia's encoder over here right nvidia actually works closely with obs the you know the the primary streaming application which most people use to stream and optimized obs to use the nvidia encoder very effectively so let's take a look at uh, you know nvidia encoder over here this promotion from nvidia such as obs and xbit to help optimize their software for geforce gpus the new updates bring a lot of performance improvements that reduce the fps impact up to 66% and offer exclusive new quality settings to push the quality of your stream even further discord the most popular chat and voice app amongst gamers is now also optimized for mvenc so you can share your screen in your channels and with your friends at the best quality you can start using mvenc in your favorite streaming apps by going to settings and selecting mvenc as your default encoder be sure to also check out our touring based laptops so you can so this was the rtx 2000 series basically the rtx 3000 series is even better so yeah i mean um, there is no competition to nvidia's encoder at the moment guys uh, it will take like basically years for radeon to catch up so yeah guys these were some of the reasons i mean uh, i'm not hating on amd guys however i don't want to sugarcoat anything this is an expensive laptop with a with an with a radeon gpu and this is something that i don't like because i am losing out all these features the rtx 3060 if you can get maybe the rtx 3060 in some situations will be slightly slower than the 6600 i mean gaming however all the other features all of these features guys you will be getting as value added features with the rtx 3050 or rtx 3060 <sighs> i mean uh, i don't want to hate on amd but this is the truth guys so yeah that's all for this video guys uh I hope you understood something and you will make your purchase decision wisely and uh, yeah I mean about the MSI Alpha 15 it is a great laptop if you want to if you want you know a slightly thinner laptop for gaming and all that and uh, the performance is really good the screen is better than most laptops in this price range 16 GB of RAM or terabyte of SSD so overall it's a good package the only thing that I don't like is the Radeon GPU which is good in gaming but again as I showed you it is not really up to par with rtx 3060 when it comes to productivity performance so yeah that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching like share and subscribe take care and i'll catch you in the next one peace